When I want my son to do anything, I need to act it out for him, to show him the steps. It comes as second nature to me because, well, I'm his mother and this is what I do, all the time. It also comes as second nature to anyone who works with young children because it's accepted knowledge that we need to model how to do things with them. How else would we teach a child how to tie their shoes, write their name, sing a song, or pass a hockey puck? Through a lecture or textbook? But what does all of this have to do with adult education? Well, I have a number of questions related to that. What does it mean to model? Do we do it enough in adult education or perhaps too much? Maybe it's because we're teaching adults we think that they already have sufficient mental models that can accommodate new learning. Or maybe the idea of explicitly showing someone how to do something just seems childish. But modeling is so much more than a demonstration of a specific skill, whether we like it or not. Whether we want to be or not, as teachers, we are modeling all the time. About 40 years ago, Chaim Gannat wrote, I have come to a frightening conclusion. I am the decisive element in the classroom. It is my personal approach that creates the climate. It is my daily mood that makes the weather. When I read this, I get stuck on I am the decisive element in the classroom. I am... I think it's in this line where the power of modeling lies. And when we know that we have this power, all we really need to do is to choose how we wield it. Think about how you talk about technology with your students. We talk about the importance of digital citizenship with our students, but do you model digital citizenship or positive behavior around technology? Are you showing your students how to learn with technology, thus modeling a passion for learning through all of the tools available to us? Or are you assuming that your students know how to use it already? We know that assuming prior knowledge can be dangerous. As teachers, we need to find out what our students already know so that we can activate it and lead them to new learning. The same thing goes for technology. A 2013 study on the effects of technology on learning discovered that weak students have poor digital habits and that they desperately need to learn how to use technology appropriately so that they don't fall even further behind their peers. How do they do that? Well, we need to be explicit with our expectations. For example, if we ask students to research on the internet, we need to show them how. We need to show them how to be critical about the information they find. But not only that, they learn by watching how we use technology. We are their prime models. We are the decisive element.